is up, my homeschool and homestead and homebodies out there. Welcome back to the show. Today's episode number 34, which means you can find the show notes at homesteadsandhomeschools.com slash 034. My guest today is Miss Samantha Shank. Samantha is a homeschool graduate. Uh, she graduated at the age of 16, I believe she said, and uh, went on to college after that and uh, got done early at Purdue. Uh, she's pretty self-motivated, as you will see, and I had her on today to talk about a little curriculum that she has developed, um, lots of resources uh, available at learnincolor.com. Um, Samantha started putting them together when she was about 14, and uh, it's developed into a bunch of resources out there, both free and uh, not free, um, but she's got some other stuff in the in the future that look like they are coming up um, for her, things that she's hoping to do with, with Learning Color. And I had her on today to, to talk about all that stuff. Um, she is a driven, driven person, and um, I, I think it all will, will come through. The last week's show, I was recording these intros and outros, and it was quite hot out. And uh, yeah, so between then and now, my uh, our AC did in fact die. So if you hear that jet jet stream in the background. Um, that's my new AC cool in the house down. And, uh, I, I'm going to try to edit it out, but, uh, we will see. We will see if you want to help the show out, go ahead and give it a share. Um, give it a review on iTunes and, uh, click through our, our Amazon link and we'll get a little, little kickback there. And you can access all those things from the show notes. There are links right built into the show notes, so you don't even have to go anywhere else. Just go to homesteadsandhomeschools.com slash 034 or go to homesteadsandhomeschools.com slash podcast and you will find all of these show notes. Um, either way, go check them out. And uh, well, let's go plant those liberty seeds with Miss Samantha Shank. guest today is Samantha Shank. She is a homeschool graduate um, and she does does a handful of other things including uh, some some pageants out there in uh, in Indiana and um, yeah she's she's got this thing called learningcolor.com you should check out and uh, we'll talk about that later and she can tell you all about what that is and what a great service that is and then what it can can give you as a homeschool parent or student if if that's what you are but anyway samantha thank you for taking the time to uh to come on and, and talk to us and and tell us about your experience yeah thank you so much for having me yeah no no problem there um so you you just graduated then right you, you said you graduated in december yep mm-hmm. all right so you're you're fresh out of the uh the homeschool uh experience i guess yeah i graduated college in december oh Okay. <laughs> All right. See, so okay. Were you homeschooled the whole way through? I was actually homeschooled from grades four through 12. Okay. Um, I was in third grade. I told my parents um, homeschooling just was not, um, public school was just not working for me. And at the time, both of my parents worked full time and we didn't know any homeschoolers. We did not know anything about homeschooling, but I just knew I was bored in public school and I wasn't being challenged. And I'm the type of person that likes a challenge. Yeah. So you, you were able to kind of recognize that a little bit at young as third grade that, um, it just wasn't, wasn't challenging enough. It wasn't your, your stick. Yeah. And just, um, I felt that there was so much more I could be doing with my time and I just wanted more flexibility to learn what my interests were instead of just what was being taught. Yeah. That's impressive. That's, uh, I, I doubt that there are many, many people out there that, um, can can pinpoint that much direction in their life, especially even even as adults, you know, let alone a I don't know seven year old, six year old. But so uh, well well done on that. <laughs> um, so w- your par- both your parents were working. What what was what was the response when you told them that you were you were done? 
Um, my parents had already, we were having a lot of problems in the public school system. Um, again, I do not think this is public schools in general. This is just my personal experience with public schools. Um, we were having issues with the teacher, the principal, the school nurse, everybody. And so my dad is a full-time firefighter and he runs a business. And then at the time, my mom was a full-time hairstylist. And so um, my mom would take me to work and I would homeschool myself in the um, hairstylist waiting room. And then if I ever needed help with something, my dad would always come home at the end of the day and help me with whatever that was. <laughs> Nice. That's, that's, that's impressive. So did you, you use a curriculum or was it a little bit more of um, kind of on the, on the unschooling sort of side of things or how did that work? At the time, it was only with a curriculum. Um, my mom had one friend who had homeschooled her daughter in kindergarten and they used um, the curriculum of Becca and that was all we knew. So we just went with that. But then as I got older, I realized what unschooling was. And I think I would have liked to do that when I was younger. And that's kind of what started my inspiration for my blog is I want to help homeschoolers out there know what their options are so they can help their child and do what's best for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's one of those things you say homeschooling and, um, I don't know, people get this idea of, of what it is, you know, you just do the same thing that you do in public school, but you do it at home. And, you know, it's, there's such a wide variety, you know, every, every home does things differently. Um, and so, and like, you know, how many, how many people were uh, doing, doing school at the, the, uh, the salon, you know, it's, uh, (laughs) so was that something that, I mean, I don't know, did, did you get sidetracked? Was it easy to, to focus? Were you just kind of, how did that go? Was that something that you enjoyed? going to work, doing things like at at your mom's work or? Yeah, I've always, um, me and I'm the oldest of five girls and, um, my other sisters are also, we're just very focused. And when we set our mind to something, we can accomplish anything we want to. And I think that those skills that I learned teaching myself and being self-taught as young as fourth grade have helped me in adult life, just because whenever I have a question, I know to Google it, or I know how to find out the information I need to know if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, you know, those tools to use, you have that in your, your box of, of tools, you know, and yeah. Um, Are your siblings also homeschooled? Did they decide to go that route or? Um, Okay, so the three oldest, um, me and my two other ones, we are all adopted from China. Okay. There's actually a 10 year age gap between us older three, and then the two younger ones. And then so, um, I was the first one to be homeschooled. And then my sister saw I was getting done with schoolwork in about three to four hours. And they're like, hey, we don't like public school either. Let's go home. Um, They both ended up graduating from a public high school, though. And currently, the two younger ones are being homeschooled. Is there any, like, so were they your, so your two, the next in line, were they homeschooled at all? Or did they just stay in the public school system? So they were homeschooled for about four to five years, I think. Think. And then they went back. So why, um, what was the, uh, the cause for them to, to go back to public school? Was that their choice or was it a, a situational type thing? Or Yeah, that was their um, choice. Hannah wanted to get involved in um, the school theater program and drama. So that's kind of where she, um, she worked a lot backstage in the tech crew during high school. And then my sister Lily went back for half of high school because she wanted to graduate from a uh, real high school because she is going to college <laughs> gymnastics and she wasn't sure how people would look at her grades if they came from a homeschool. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. And that, that makes sense. You know, and that's, that was one of my big things when we decided to, to homeschool our kids, you know, um, sports was a huge thing for, for me in high school and public high school. And, uh, you know, you want to be able to give them those things to have those opportunities. And I think now you're seeing more and more kids, coming out of homeschool homeschool is growing and there's there's more opportunities for that sort of stuff um you know so it's it is but it definitely makes sense um did they did they how was that transition for them did they have any um complaints or anything um my sister didn't like waking up as early <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they um really enjoyed it and for me um I'm all about what works for you. And I knew that public high school probably wasn't the most ideal, especially for my situation. And so I just liked the flexibility of the homeschooling offered. And then that's why I chose that route. 
and I was able to graduate high school early and college early. Yeah, it was, that, was, that was the next thing I was going to ask. So you kind of, I mean, it sounds like you were pretty driven. It sounds like you were kind of, you know, doing your thing. Um, so when you, did you stick with Abeka the whole way through? So as I got older, um, Abeka's high, um, math was starting to really like wear on me. Just mm-hmm. because it wasn't explaining things. And then when I hit algebra two, I'm like, that's, that's it. This is crazy. And I ended up switching to Saxon. And towards the end of my high school career, I ended up switching to more literature-based English curriculums just because I was really tired of textbooks. Um, For history, I stopped doing history textbooks in high school because I didn't see the point of them. And I started just um, learning history through literature. And that's kind of another inspiration for my blog because books and movies have taught me more about history than any textbook ever will. Yeah, yeah, you definitely... That that was something I, I kind of came to a little bit when I was um, doing my master's there and teaching and it was English and, and there was so much in literature that just reading, you know, time pieces and stuff like that, that you kind of, you can kind of pick up, you know, and it, the textbooks and they can supplement it, but so much of this public school learning just comes like open the textbook to page 235 and read section three, you know, and it's just, it's something, but at the same time, you can get that other ways that I don't know are, are seem to help are, are more entertaining, you know. Um, exactly. So, but uh, all right. So, how long did it take you to get through high school? Then, um, I finished high school when I was sixteen. Um, I did not want to go into college straight as a sixteen-year-old, so I kind of took a gap year and I focused on earning scholarship money. Um, and then I started high school the next year. I mean, I started college the next year, and then I was able to finish college in two and a half years. Okay, so you didn't you didn't do any sort of like dual enrollment stuff, right? Taking college classes and in, in while you were doing high school stuff. Um, I did four through a local college. Um, my grandma drove me because at the time I was just <laughs> my mom didn't want me driving that way, but. Um, yeah, so I took was able to take four throughout my in, during my gap year. Okay, all right. And how how was that making that that transition, going from you know this homeschool program that's pretty much self directed and and you're doing your thing to this you know college classroom where it's a it's a whole different learning style you know a whole different teaching style. Um, I think I think one of the things that I got was I was I went to a small Christian school. And I really appreciated how the professors, since they were smaller class sizes, they got to know me on a more personal level. And a lot of them adapted their curriculum or the assignments to kind of match what I'm already doing, which I really appreciated. Um, but yeah, there were some times when it was, I just got frustrated sitting in a classroom when I could be doing something else or I was missing out on something. Yeah. So it was yeah. not uncommon for me to work in class. and. My teachers never said anything so good deal good deal when when you graduated um you know you mentioned your your sister wanted a a diploma from a, a real high school if you will or whatever um what what was it that you so what did you put on your transcript or what did your sort of transcript look like when you were applying to colleges um i made my own transcript i had researched the heck out of it um and my SAT scores were actually better than both of my sisters. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then my SAT scores helped me. Did, did uh, when you, throughout the application process, did anybody question any of your, your homeschooling or, or anything like that? Did anybody? Um, during a program called Distinguished Young Women, um, tw- that's a kind of, it's another pageant. And I earned quite a bit of scholarship money through there, but they did give me a little bit of flack for my transcript. Um, but overall, I think that they could tell from my SAT scores that I was fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's always the thing, right? I think when you can get in, in, get an interview or when you can actually talk to someone or, you know, you might have an SAT score or something, people can talk to you and realize that, okay, you know, yes, this homeschool thing, they don't have like a, a traditional high school diploma, but they're on the ball. They, they get it, you know? Um, and so I, th- 
it's always tricky, you know, because sometimes I'm sure there's people out there that, that look at their, your transcript that says I was homeschooled or whatever you want to call it and shrug it off and, and, and don't give it the, the credit that it, it needs. But um, I'm glad yeah. that glad that worked for you. The thing I got kind of from that whole incident was just that grades like don't really matter because mm-hmm. like I said, I had a higher SAT score than my sister, Hannah, but my sister, Hannah is in the top 15 in her class of 400 and she's extremely smart. And so it just comes down to the fact that grades really don't define intelligence. And although I did better on the SATs, like in other ways, she's definitely smarter than me. And so for me that the SAT scores was just kind of a way for other people to validate that, oh, she didn't just make up her transcript. Yeah. 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 There's this. So much of that, you know, so many, you can be so smart, so intelligent. And if you don't have any, any drive or you don't have any kind of common sense to apply it, it just doesn't matter, you know, and, and grades are, that's what grades are. I mean, you know, it's just, were, were you able to recite this information uh, when, when you were told to, you know, so. Exactly. But, um, so you started doing pageants then um, in your gap year, sort of, or did you start towards the end of, of your high school program? Yeah, so that was when I um, was 16 years old. Um, I just started with my local county fair, um, Elkhart County. Um, I did not know what I was doing, <laughs> know what to expect, but it's always something fun. I'm, I'm always liking to try new things, and I did really well in that. And then two weeks later, I ended up winning Distinguished Young Women, that which is a, it's officially called the scholarship program, not a pageant. Okay. But it's the same, it's the same gist of it. Yeah. Now, and so you, what, what prompted you to wake up and say, you know, I'm going to sign up for this, uh, this pageant at the, the county fair. I mean, I just, that's something that I, you know, I would never do. I, I like, you know, that's like, I, I, you know, there's some things I would just never do because it's just not in my, my wheelhouse. I would never, you know, make be very uncomfortable. Um, so what, what was it that you decided to do that um honestly i'm still uncomfortable on stage i look awkward um i'm not comfortable up on stage but i like getting out of my comfort zone because it pushes me to do new things and the scholarship money was a huge factor like i've earned i think it's like almost eight thousand dollars through pageant so far nice and so that um played a really big part in helping me graduate debt free yeah yeah, i can imagine that would that would help some um (laughs) So and that is that something that you're you're still doing then, even though you're kind of done with college and stuff or um, I do have plans to compete at least one more year just because I really enjoyed the girls and currently I'm taking graduate classes at Purdue. Okay. All right. So what yeah, all right, let's go back to college then. When uh what did you do in college? Um, I majored in business administration. Okay. All right. And I, I imagine some of that had to do with uh learning color a little bit yeah mm-hmm. okay all right and is that what you're doing in purdue at purdue then doing more more business stuff um i'm actually getting a certificate in gifted and talented education so i okay. wished my undergrad probably would have like i wish it would have been in education but i'm happy with the business but i do want to pursue education more from a teacher's perspective because so far all of my resources have catered solely towards homeschoolers and then as i've talked and gotten feedback from other teachers i realized teachers have different needs than homeschoolers do so i'm just trying to pinpoint those pain points to help teachers out too yeah yeah it's uh it is tricky you know cuz teachers are it's such a different different world you know you, you different your classroom is there's so much stratification of, of, you know, the really super intelligent kids and kids that aren't at all and, and everybody in between. And it's, it can be, it can be tricky. It can be tough. Um, you know, have you, what have you, when you've talked to teachers, um, what are some things that, that have stood out for you that you, I don't know, differences or, or things that you've kind of recognized and said, Oh, wow, look at that. Like that's, I can't believe that. I think one of the biggest um, differences is homeschoolers are more concerned about actually learning, and then teachers are more generally concerned about um, assessments and tests. 
Yeah. And so yeah. I think with, when you're homeschooling your one child and you're talking to them every day and you're discussing it, you know if they're comprehending the book or something. But when you're teaching 30 students, the only way for you to know if they're all comprehending it is through a written test. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, um, that is, that is the case for sure. Um, yeah. I, I remember teaching a little bit. Um, and it was, it's tough trying to, trying to yeah, like it's see not if they all get it, you know? Yeah. It's just the nature of a big classroom. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, you know, it is, it's, it's, um, it's tough because a lot of times, you know, people want to slag off teachers a little bit and I get that, you know, I, I get that. But at the same time, um, it's not necessarily, you know, it's, it's not an easy job, right? Um, you know, the, the classes are usually overcrowded. You don't have the special needs help that you might actually need, um, you know, and there's so much that you have to worry about in terms of teaching to a particular curriculum or a particular um, standards that are laid out either by, by the state or, or the federal government or whatever it may be. And that that really ties your hands as a teacher. Um, exactly. you know, some of those things that may, may, you know, culturally in your particular area, you know, might be more applicable and, and kids would learn better or learn more if you could teach them that. And, but anyway, that's, you know, public school and, and homeschool, private school, but, um, all right. So, <coughs> so this learning color thing, why don't you tell us real quick what that, what is that? Um, so I provide resources mainly for grades four through eight to make school come alive and to help students connect their learning with the world, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I was looking at it and um, yeah, it was, it's, uh, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of resources there. Um, you've, you've put a lot of time into that for sure. Um and I, I, the one, the section on, on movies, I think movies and books and all the, all the movies, it was, it was great. They're just like, there's current movies and there's movies that you, you wouldn't expect necessarily, right? Like what, what am I going to get from sitting down and watching Nemo, <laughs> you know, but yeah. well, but that's it though, right? Like all of like you, you can take some of the most insignificant things and turn them into a learning experience. Um, and I, and I think that's kind of what you've been able to do with, with those resources there. Um, yeah. And like, especially with movies like finding Nemo or the greatest showman, your kids are already watching these movies anyway. Your mm -hmm. kids are already enjoying these movies. So why don't we take the movie Nemo and we learn about Australia or we learn about clownfish or how oceans work and things like that. And so in my opinion, if kids are already interested in something, why not turn it into a history lesson and realize like, hey, The Greatest Showman really is a fun movie, but let's look at like the real story behind it. I mean, what was true? What was not And it can just help kids make connections with books and movies and connect them to their own real world. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a good thing. I, I, I really do. I appreciate that. Um, so when, when did you start learning color? Um, it started as a 14 year old. And at that time I had, it was just a creative outlet for me. Um, I love World War II. I'm overly obsessed with it. And so a lot of my first posts were just me writing about my favorite stories from World War II, my favorite World War II books and movies. And from that, I started to gain a following. How? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> and then a couple of years later, I realized you could make money blogging. And I got connected with an amazing group of homeschool moms who make six figures a year blogging. And I thought, wow, I kind of want to do this. I'm passionate about it. I love doing it. And it's just kind of grown from there. All right. So when you first started doing it then, was it, it was just out of enjoyment then? It was just, I mean, were you, did it come out of like a homeschool project or what? you just wanted to blog or, I mean, what, what was it that really got it going? Um, it was honestly just my parents and my family was getting, were was kind of getting tired of me talking about World War II, but I also had like a need to share all these amazing stories because especially when it comes to 
World War II and the Holocaust in particular, we often hear about all of the negatives of the war. And there are there were a lot, and I think those are important to talk about. But there were so many good people during that time, and nobody ever hears those stories. And so this was just kind of my way of giving a voice to the voiceless and showing people that there are actually good in the world. Yeah. Kind of a strange mission for a 14-year-old, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, because that's, I mean, no, knowing that you had, knowing where learning color is now and learn and knowing that you, you know, first started doing this all when you were like 14 years old. It, that's why it didn't, it, you know, it's not surprising that you finished high school at, at like 16 years old. You know, it just, you seem, you know, driven um, and, and that you're, you get an idea and you, you go for it. Um, and, you know, and so when, when did, um, when did you start branching out and, and introducing, I don't know, more, more resources or different topics, different ideas? Um, so in 2016, I realized that, so the way I particularly make money blogging is through ads and then affiliate links. Um, but then as I was doing more research on it, I realized that you have to have an insane amount of traffic to be making a lot of money just through those two mediums. Like you, you're not going to get there. Um, and then that's when I started creating more products. So, and I think it was 2014, I published um, a post called the math cheat sheet. And I had originally created for my, that for myself in elementary school because I was tired of flipping through my textbook and trying to find formulas because I'm lazy. And so I had all these tabs in my um, textbook and I was writing them down in colored pens on my sheet. I ended up making it really pretty in a nice Excel sheet and it was so random. And I'm like, hey, maybe somebody else can enjoy this. And that post kind of went viral. It's had over a quarter of a million downloads. Nice. And from that on, that's when I created the Ultimate Language Arts Cheat Sheets and the Ultimate Math Cheat Sheet. And those were created in my freshman dorm, that's kind of where those products taken off. And then that's start where I really started to see growth. And that was in 2017. Okay. All right. And I assume it's continued to grow since then? Yes. I've grown every year since then, which I'm really proud of. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's nice to see that growth. You know, when the growth stagnates or starts to go down, it's always, it's tough to keep going sometimes, but that's, um, it's nice when it keeps going. So, um, I know you got you got movies. You got the different cheat sheets on there. Um, what what else? What, what's some of your what's one of your favorite things that you have up there? Like if you could tell anybody to go go to learningcolor.com and search for this or click on this uh, this resource. Which one's your your favorite? You think or most 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 useful? Um, how to memorize the periodic table in a week. Mm. <laughs> so I learned about this. Um, I was in freshman in college. Um, I'm really upset it took me this long to learn about it. But it is a memory technique that has been used for centuries. It is used by all the memory champions in the world. And with that method, I was able to kind of hack my way through school and binge study for a test. And then after I studied, I would be able to recite the material forward and backward to you. Nice. That's... Uh... Yeah, my 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 son is uh, is working with the periodic table right now a little bit. I'll have to. You should look uh, it up. Uh, uh, yeah, I have to do that. Make him make him memorize it. Uh, he'll he'll hate me when I tell him. I said, so today we're gonna start. You're gonna start memorizing it. Like, what? That's really really fun though. Yeah, it, you know it's funny. Um, I hated like chemistry, and there's some other things that I, I really I didn't like. Do. And, I was horrible at science. <laughs> yeah, 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 and like going back and like teaching it to to my kids um helping them get through some of the stuff is i'm like oh wait this is this is interesting now now i get as an adult now i can see how some of the stuff is is a little more useful or or why this is pertinent to to actually learning um as opposed to just now you know this formula and you can solve this this problem you know um but uh all right and um what uh what kind of plans do you have for, for learning color then in the future? I know you, you mentioned that, um, you know, at, at Purdue you're, you're doing the sort of education thing. You're trying to build something for, 
for current teachers, like public school teachers, is that is that where you're hoping to take uh, take learning color, or is that going to be something else? You think? Um, right now, I am just working on creating more resources. Um, I have a new book coming out in September, The Ultimate Algebra Cheat Sheets, and then from there, I'm hoping to keep branching out with other cheat sheet types and other hands-on activities for kids. Good deal. Do you have any plans to make it um, for like older kids? I know you said it's like for fourth to eighth grade thereabouts. Yes, I would love to create um, more cheat sheets for high school um, and college age kids, especially when I'm prepping for the CLEP tests or a, um, AP tests. Mm-hmm. Just because I love taking massive amounts of information and smushing them all into a few pages in the color because for me, it makes it easier to memorize and it makes it easier to digest the information without all of the fluff that a textbook or even some study guides have. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, good, good luck with that. I, uh, I wish you well with that. It's a, uh, I, I do, I appreciate the, um, the resources that are on there. Cause there, there is some of that free stuff. That's always, always useful. I know there's, you know, homeschoolers are always looking for, for free, free resources and there's, some things you can pay for too. And it's, um, it's nice to have those, those out there. So thank you for that. Um, when, when is your book coming out? Um, September 25th. All right. That'll be, that'll be right around the time this, this, this comes out. So, um, yeah. All right. So go ahead and, um, <laughs> go ahead and, uh, and, and plug your stuff. I know we, we talked about learningcolor.com. Um, is there any place else we can go to, to find you or um, yeah, then from social media, I am learning color on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. So right. on the on the Pinterest, yeah. I, I never, I never really got into Pinterest. My wife used to, to pull up some things and try to get me to do stuff. And I never, I never did. And so I think she she stopped. But uh, I heard it's a, a useful, useful place to go to find things. But so many good ideas oh, yeah i know and, and there's there are there are so many good ideas and there's so many ideas that are like man i can't do that i can't do that with a palette get out of here but um anyway all right well i i thank you for coming on samantha um i will link to all those things in the show notes and um i will link to your your book as well um i think will that will that be on amazon no so far i'm only selling through my website okay well we will put a link to that um in the show notes as well and uh yeah thanks for coming on and good luck with all your your future endeavors there thank you all right Do you love freedom? Do you love songs? Do you want to love all 365 days in a year? If you're anything like me, the simple answer is yes. And Freedom Song 365 can deliver all of these things. When you sign up for Freedom Song 365, you'll receive an email every day that delves into the different ways freedom and liberty are messaged in a massive catalog of music. Each message is carefully crafted into easily consumable paragraphs that give you the necessary information to share with your friends. I've been receiving Freedom Song 365 emails every day of 2019, and I've yet to be disappointed. But really, why should I be? With the fabulous minds of Nikki P. from the Sounds Like Liberty podcast, my guest from episode 4, Sherry Voluntary, and the wonderful Luke Tatum of the Culture of Peace podcast, there's more brain power utilized in the creation of each individual Freedom Song 365 email than is proffered in a whole day at any DMV across the country. Head on over to freedomsong365.com and sign up today to start receiving your daily emails of musical integrity. Use the promo code HOMESTEAD and you'll receive 15% off the superb service. Again, that's freedomsong365.com, promo code HOMESTEAD for 15% off. Okay, and I'm back. Hope you guys enjoyed that little interview with Miss Samantha Shank there. Um, if you have not checked out her website, go check it out, learningcolor.com. Um, there's a link in the show notes that uh, is, in fact, an affiliate link. Not that it, you know, I like to, to throw those affiliate links out there once in a while. You know, you'll get a little return. So um, whatever's easier, go uh, go do that. Anyway, I think that's all all for today. I appreciate you guys hanging out and listening. 
Um, hoping to get on some more curriculum type uh, folks out there uh, to, to tell us about different types of curriculum that are, are out there that have been developed. Um, I don't know. I, I think I have a, a month of uh, musicians coming up in November. Just a bunch of interviews with uh, musicians that are uh, either homesteading or homeschooling. Should be, should be pretty cool. Check your feed for the last Thursday of this month, and there may just be a little show in there for you. But uh, I can't guarantee it. Not yet, anyway. But uh, check it out. I think I think it's going to be something I'm, I'm going to try to do uh, going forward. Um, and of course, go go to Facebook and plug it in. Facebook.com slash homesteads and homeschools. Give that page a like. Head on over to the group, the Homesteaded Homeschool Forum, and uh, keep it growing. Keep sharing. Keep giving me things to do to guests to have on, questions to ask, and uh, directions to, to take the show. It'll help us all out in the long run, I, I suppose, right? Get out there. Sow those seeds of liberty. We can all reap sheaves of freedom together. Yeah,